Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Journeyman Project Turbo. We have made our way to 2 million BC in order to find the historical log, which apparently we placed here because, heck, nobody is going to go to 2 million BC in order to alter history. That is just impractical. It's really nice though, I will say. Like, we got a nice volcano here. And a dangerous cliff. Oh boy. And pterodactyls. Awesome. Now I pulled out the mapping biochip just to kind of show what it does. The mapping biochip pretty much maps anywhere you have been. That's it. You don't you don't get an actual map. It's not an, you kind of get a compass of where you're going, sort of. It just gives you the point of where's north compared to where you're facing. I want to go to the volcano. There is so many, so much lush environment. I want to go there. Well, you get the picture. You just kind of fall off. His hand is... Wow. That, the graphic novel quality. Wow. Comic book quality. Awesome. Yeah, so we fall from the cliff. So I'll see you back when we're looking at the volcano. Hello again, cliff and volcano, which is apparently active right now because it's fizzing. And hello again, pterodactyl. So, now to start making our journey into the cliff side. Oh no. Don't tell me we have to actually face against dinosaurs. We can't do that. I mean, we don't even have any weapons or anything. Like, uh, this is not good. So you can see on the mapping biochip how every m place I, um, every move I take is actually mapped back onto it. So we have a pretty good path of where we're going. Hey there, buddy. Hello. Um, bye. I guess I'm not advertising because they're actually not going for me. Oh, what's that in the distance? Hey, it's what the lady said. We just click on that and we open up the rock face in order to see this really eerie looking keyhole. I mean, really, it looks... It looks menacing in my opinion. So, what we have to do is use this wonderful journeyman key on it, which will... Open the vaults and get the Dream and Historical Log, as it says in the description. Let's also look at the Pegasus Biochip. We'll be using it pretty shortly in order to get back to the present. We need to use energy, which, as you can see, has been steadily depleting since we've started being in this area. And also the Mapping Biochip. It shows, it automatically records where the agent has walked. So, as you can see, we have done this wonderful zigzag shape. It's kind of handy, it's especially handy in one specific area in the game, but pretty much that's it. Uh. Whoa! Hey! Uh, this is not cool. Um, I can't see anything. <laughs> I can't see anything. Okay, let's try that again and actually look at what we're doing. I never knew you could do that. Okay. Watch the journeyman key do its thing. And voila! We have a journeyman historical log. It's actually a really weird looking disc. It's kind of distorted and odd. But it contains every single historical count, news clipping, all of recorded history is on this single disc. That is one powerful disc, to have thousands of years of knowledge 
onto it. But it's what we're going to compare the change disk to, so I guess it's kind of handy. So, as you can see, we're kind of actually done with uh, 2 million BC right now. This area is actually hideously short, and Pegasus Prime does a big overhaul on this area and actually turns it into an actual level. And I pulled up the Pegasus chip just so you can see what is going on. We have coordinates and stuff, and the temporal rip status of this area has been resolved, even though there's no rip here. But yeah, we can jump anytime we want to. But yeah, this is, this is it. This is 2 million BC. This is dinosaurs. This is, this is such a big disappointment. I mean, Pegasus Prime does it so much better by actually putting in lush jungle, obstacles, I believe a puzzle or two. It makes it actually worth your while. You can get through this area in about maybe a minute, 30 seconds. 30 seconds minimum, about a minute. And then go back and actually go through with the game. So we can jump anytime we want. However, I want to actually do two things while we're here. One, I'm going to make the energy counter go down to zero. And second, I'm going to actually elaborate... Hello again, Tyrodactyl. I'm going to elaborate on why the TSA was so scarce. Why we were actually the only one there. Pegasus Prime does a great deal of filling in gaps from Turbo, so that's where I'm getting my source from. In Pegasus Prime, at the beginning of Pegasus Prime, you're actually woken up by Agent 3, who pretty much says, get your butt out of bed, you have to be over here in order to relieve all of us. Now, why are you relieving all of them? Well, everybody at the TSA knew that the Strawolan procession was going to happen, and because of that, Everybody kind of wanted to see it, however, you're the TSA, and you need to be there in order to preserve history. It's kind of important. However, you, Agent 5, thought it was a gr would be a great idea if only one of you was monitoring there. You only kind of need one mo pe person monitoring there. So, what you decide to do is draw straws to see who stays behind. Oh boy. Energy level 15%. I can also show off the warning light here. That's even better. So yeah, we draw straws. Of course, you get the shortest straw, which means that you relieve everybody else, including your commissioner, who you never see in this game, however you see in Pegasus Prime. And you're pretty much monitoring all by your lonesome. And then of course a rip hits and you're into the game. So, yeah. You draw straws, everybody's at the Cerulean procession right now, and don't even in I don't think in Turbo nobody even knows that a rip is happening. In Pegasus Prime, the commissioner of course knows. A couple of other things I wanted to mention was how the the differences in TSA and Pegasus Prime. There's actually a, a big amount of differences. The command center, where there's only a chair, a desk, with three monitors and a poster in this game, looks much more advanced and scientific with like fusion reactors and it's a circular desk with tons of monitors. And there's also in cylinders at the at the entrance two really creepy looking robots who welcome you in it's lucky they're behind i think bulletproof glass because they look like you could they could instantly kill you there's also heads in the begin in the at the entrance to the TSA which is pretty much just showing off all of the all the people who made like, I believe it's the developers of Presto Studios, as well as Elliot Sinclair, the founder of Time Travel. But yeah, there's why the TSA is scarce as all hell. And since now all we have to do is wait for our energy to deplete. So I'll come back when anything come, when anything is important, I'll be right back. Energy level 25%.
And as energy gets lower and lower, the light gets from yellow to orange to, I believe, red. We'll see the red later on. Energy level critical. Critical. So now it's red. This is probably a good time to actually jump back, especially when you get into the actually restoring the rip, the, the time rip. Because what happens is, well, you need all the energy you can get, and you can get unlimited, and you have many attempts in order to do this. Two, one, and this is what happens when you reach zero. A pterodactyl comes and eats you. Yeah. So, now we're stuck in 2 million BC, and, well, you're stuck here forever. You even get finale points. This is an ending, apparently, to the game. Wow. And it's not something you actually come by unexpectedly. You actually have to be waiting this long. You have to be, well, a genius, as it says sarcastically in here, in order to do this. So, I'll meet you back in 2 million BC, and we'll actually jump back to Pegasus. Alright, so now we have the historical log again, and apparently our rip status is unresolved. Why? That, that's kind of odd. Okay, now it's resolved. Excellent. Alright. No sense being here anymore. Let's jump. And now we're back in Pegasus. Excellent. If you're ask if you're gonna ask me what what the map means and why the temporal rip is apparently at 775, I really have no answer to tell you. I think it's just more aesthetic touch, really. But that's going to do it for me this episode, guys, because next episode we have to deal with actually looking at both the change disc and the historical log to see what has actually changed in history. So yeah, that's next episode, guys. See you next time, everyone. Behold the land, it's full of atmosphere. Da, 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 da. Sha, da, 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 da. <laughs> Screw you, log. I'm putting you back in. Oh, come on. Take it back. Take it back. I want you to t no. Fine. Screw you. I'm leaving.